All right, so one of the big questions, and actually we had it on Fox the other day, was what goes on in the defrost cycle. And we promised that we would cover it more in depth on our personal channel because it is a kind of push. I mean, we have a time limit of what we got to deal with on Fox. And they, they put up with me a lot. So, <laughs> but anyway, here we go. Defrost cycle in a unit. The first thing that you're going to notice usually is that you never heard this unit before. And now it's sitting outside your bedroom window and you hear this big, swishing noise coming off the unit and it sounds like something detri det detrimental is going wrong with it. It's not. That's normal operation. So if you're new to your home and it's the first winter, that's the first time you heard it, it's normal. Okay. So here's what goes on in a def defrost cycle. First thing on most modern machines, now I'm talking about relatively within the last 15 years or so, we have a demand defrost cycle which is why you don't necessarily notice it all winter long. So what demand defrost means is that there's a control board in here that's figuring out, and what it's, how it's figuring that out is it's taking an actual temperature reading on the coil itself. So it does a couple of things. One, it says outdoor ambient air temp is low enough to where I might need to go into a defrost cycle. The second thing is it's taking a temperature reading off the coil to saying, yes, I need to go into a defrost cycle. And that's different within a few degrees on different units. So once it goes into that defrost cycle, there's three things, three main things that are going to happen. The first thing is that loud swish. And some units will actually have the compressor shut off temporarily to switch the valve over. What that loud swish is, is it going from heating mode to cooling mode. Sounds crazy, I know, but that's how this system operates. So it goes into cooling mode, and the reason it goes into cooling mode is because now we need to turn this back into the condensing unit. We need to turn it into what is the high pressure side of the system in, in order to defrost all the ice and frost buildup that's going up on that coil. Now it does another couple things to speed up that process. One of those things is this outdoor fan is going to shut off. So that outdoor fan, you'll notice that it quits spinning anymore. And the third thing that's going to happen is it's going to send a signal to your indoor unit, your air handler, to bring on the auxiliary heat strips. It does that because it's switching the cooling cycle. So you are going to notice immediately that now you have a not so warm air coming out of your vents. Hopefully, if your auxiliary heat strips are sized appropriately from the machine, then you won't really notice it much, that much. It'll be about room temperature. If you have a four ton unit with a 5KW heat strips on there, it's probably going to feel pretty dang cold. But those are things to take account on there. Um, so while all that happens, when you'll go back outside and you'll look, and this is where we normally get the calls at first bits of the winter time, is my unit's on fire. It's not. It's steam coming up from the unit. It's normal. We could show you here later on another YouTube what a unit on fire looks like. We plan on it. But we'll see a bunch of steam coming off the system. And then it'll do that for however long it takes to defrost this coil. It usually takes about 30 seconds. Sometimes it could take up to a couple minutes. Eventually, it's going to switch back over. Usually, that's when you hear that really loud swishing noise coming off the system because we have a higher pressure than it's used to. It's swishing back over, and now we basically go back into normal operations. Your fan cuts back on, you're back in the heating mode, the auxiliary heat strips come back off, and it's back up to normal. Where we see problems at, freezing rain is a big problem. Freezing rain, you'll, you'll notice even on this unit right here, this is at least not a stamp grade, um, uh, when I say stamp metal, uh, that, that comes out of a press. This is sheet metal that they just press levers into. You'll see more problems out of those. This has just kind of got that, um, that wire mesh grade going around it. You still have issues on this as well, but not as much as stamp, uh, stamp metal. Anyway, that freezing rain gets on top of that and it blocks, it puts a blanket of ice over this whole top of the unit. That's a real bad thing. The easiest thing to do when, you're, when, you, when you start first not noticing that freezing rain coming outside and you walk out to your unit, if you could just beat around the edges of it a little bit and break that up, not beat the hell out of your unit, but just kind of break it up a little bit, by all means, please do not put a screwdriver into it because you are going to tear something up bad but just some basic vibration if you can get that block of ice off of there. 
and then shed it off. It can solve you a lot of problems. You also see icicles that come down off the uh, stamp and it'll stop the blade while it's not running. Um, that's a bad deal too because now the fan can't run and it goes in a heating cycle and it doesn't know that fan's not running and your coil gets extremely cold and starts building up ice extremely fast and it's, it's more than the defrost cycle on the system can take care of. At that point, it needs somebody to get out there and manually take care of it. All right, so here's where I've gotten some flack in the, in the past from folks of just basic tips of how to take care of it and they say, we're trying to scam you. I'm not. This is something legitimately that we will do going out to your house. First thing I'll do is pull the disconnect out. I'll make sure all power is off to the system. Must happen. Make sure the control panels are covered up because I don't want to be anything accessing in the control panel. And I'm going to spray water on it. Not hot water, not something out of the... Um, we generally have a dry hose in our truck because we'll drain our hose while we're coming out, hook up to the water faucet. It's running water. It takes a little while, but it'll defrost all the air. If it's 25 degrees outside, you're going to be sitting out here all day long waiting for this thing to defrost and it never will. So to manually do it, that's the most delicate way I can find to defrost the system. Um, we never use any objects or any force actions trying to come down on the ice to try to break up that ice because it's wrapped up around the capillary tubes on side of the going down the condensing unit. You, you got the chance of having a screwdriver stab through your coil, anything like that. And now you now you just bust your unit up. But the softest way I, I've found to defrost a system is just as simple as that, a water hose. And once it's all the way defrosted, and everything's back to normal, you can crank the unit back up. And hopefully, you don't have another freeze and rain that night that blocks everything off and your back's doing the same thing. But it works. And it saves you a call. And it just saves you a good bit of money, hopefully. That's probably the biggest nuisance call that we have during that first freeze and rain cycle. And we can't get to them all. Because guess what? The ice is, the, <laughs> the ice is over all the roads, too. So we're having our own issues. Love y'all. Take care. Hey, look, if y'all are looking for more tips, we're always looking for your feedback and we want to answer your questions and we will on a regular basis on our YouTube channel. So subscribe right here to our YouTube channel, not here, here to our YouTube channel. <laughs> and we'll, we'll try to make sure we take care of all the questions and answer them efficiently for you. Y'all take care. God bless.